Hey guys, and welcome back to Taylor Tech. Today we're going to be talking about compression, expansion, gating, and limiting. Now what these are are forms of signal processing that are used to control the decibel level of a signal. Common uses for these are to give a more even level to a signal that might be changing in volume throughout the course of a performance. Also, it can be used to eliminate unwanted signals uh, such as low-level background noise. I personally use both ex uh, expansion and compression when I'm doing either these types of videos right now or when I'm streaming because I'm in an unfinished basement. It's extremely noisy uh, and also I'm not the best presenter so my voice level will change throughout the course of the video as I'm recording or throughout the course of a stream. So that's why I've got this guy right here which is my compressor. Before we go forward I want to make sure that you understand some common terms when we talk about compression and expansion, uh, gating and limiting, so that the explanations make a lot more sense to you, hopefully. The first one is ratio. Uh, ratio describes the relationship between the input signal and the output signal. Um, you're usually expressed just like, a like you would expect as a ratio, so a four to one ratio. Uh, and the way to read this is for every four decibels of, for compression is for every four decibels of input, I get one decibel of output. So, and it works similarly for expansion. So the next thing to understand is threshold. So threshold will be a point, a decibel level within the, the signal at which you want either compression or expansion, gating or limiting to take effect. So the attack is the amount of time that it takes for uh, the signal processing to kick in. Often you don't want these things to kick on instantly because it will create an odd sound. It, 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 it sounds really weird and very mechanical. Uh, you want them to ramp up and ramp down to create a more natural and even tone. Hold, on the other hand, is the amount of time that uh, a, an effect will continue once something has, has crossed back from a threshold. Finally, we have release, which is the amount of time it takes for the effect to stop or to go out of effect once uh, the hold has ended. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there are four types of signal processing we're talking about here, and they're very closely related, though. The first one is compression. So what compression does is it reduces the decibel level of a signal above a certain ratio. Now expansion is very similar to compression except it works below the threshold. So, um, so what expansion does is it reduces the, the output signal level for a given input by a specific ratio for all signals below a certain threshold. Next we have limiting. Limiting is very similar to compression except um, it will, instead of giving a ratio that it reduces it by, it reduces it to the threshold level. So it, an easy way to think of limiting is infinite level compression. You're basically saying this is the absolute maximum signal that I want to output. The same thing goes for gating. Gating is like infinite ratio expansion. Essentially you are cutting off all signals below a certain decibel level. So the common uses here, compression and limiting will be used to maintain a more even level for a speaker or an instrument during a performance, and expansion gating will be used to reduce noise, uh, or background noise that is unwanted. So some things to consider with this uh, when you're using compression and expansion are um, that they are going to overall reduce the dynamic range of a signal. If you think about it, you're forcing the output signal to have a lower decibel level than it normally would. So if you remember from our video about dynamic range, essentially the difference between the highest possible sound and the quietest possible sound is going to be a much smaller distance once you use compression. Another thing to consider is that at high levels of compression, you're removing a lot of signal level from uh, a given signal. This might require additional gain to bring the signal back up to a usable level. So a lot of compressors will actually include a makeup gain or an output gain to help you get some of that level back. Another thing to consider is that usually you don't want to go to extremes when we talk about compression on any of the settings, either the ratio, um, the attack, the release, the hold, or the uh, threshold. This can produce really unexpected and unwanted effect. The exception here may be if you're using it to produce a specific effect. So um, it is possible to you know, give an instrument a different sound or a different color by using a very high level of compression that will be somewhat similar to like an overdrive. So the next thing I want to do is give you some practical advice on how to set up a compressor or expander to give you a better audio quality for your video, podcast, or stream. Now usually what you'll want to do is you'll want to start by getting the gain level set on whatever device you're bringing the microphone into. If you have the ability to use inserts on your mixer, please, that's the best way to do it. You'll want to provide gain before going into the compressor. 
If you don't have the ability to do that, you will have to use an FX channel or an AUX channel to send the signal to the compressor. What you'll do is you'll basically work expansion and then compression and then limiting and makeup gain if necessary. Not every device that you're gonna that you, that's out there is gonna have the same options that I'm gonna discuss here. In fact, my device doesn't have many of the options I'm gonna discuss because it's cramming four channels into a single rack unit device. So after you have your mic set up and you're ready to start with your compressor, make sure everything is zeroed all the way out, all the buttons are unpressed, and you're ready to go. You'll want to make sure the compressor is engaged, and then you'll want to start with the expander of the gate. For vocals, I prefer expansion over gating. Gating can have kind of like a harsh cutting quality where expansion will allow a natural fall off of a voice to sound normal. What I would do is I would take the threshold level for the expander of the gate um, and increase it all the way until, here actually we'll use this mic because that'll help. So I can see what I'm doing as I'm talking. I would take the uh, expander gate and turn it up high until it's no longer tripping. And what I'm going to do is without speaking, being as quiet as possible, I'm going to turn it down until it starts to trip. So that will let me know what the baseline noise level in the room is. Okay, you can see it's starting to trip here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back up just a little bit. Turn it up three or four clicks, just enough so that any transient background noise is not going to trip the expander of the gate. So that way we're going to make sure that we're not capturing background noise when we're not speaking. The next thing you would do is you would set the ratio for the expander or the compressor. Or I'm sorry, for the expander. So when you set the ratio for the expander, a good place to start is somewhere between a 2 to 1 and a 3 to 1 ratio. You may find that you need to increase this if you have a noisy environment, but um, you want to avoid really high levels of expansion because it's going to make your voice drop really hard when you start to end talking. So compression is going to be a little bit different. Um, you'll start by setting, you know, I would start by setting the uh, threshold for the compressor a few decibels above where you set the threshold for the expander or the gate. Uh, the reason for this is I want to start compressing the sound as soon as I'm allowing the sound through. Um, and if you're using expander, you may even want to set it a few decibels below the ex expander threshold because there is going to be signal coming through on the expander when the signal is below the threshold. It's just going to be a reduced signal. For ratio on a compressor, I usually We'll start somewhere between two and four. I usually settle somewhere around two and a half or three, depending on the microphone and depending on the person talking. The higher, remember, the higher the compression ratio, the more dynamic level you're giving up, um, and the more makeup gain you're going to need. You're going to get a more even level as an output. Keep that in mind. Generally, somewhere anywhere between two and four is going to be good. Once you go much higher than four, uh, you start to get different effects that you may not intend, and below two is really not as noticeable of an effect. So with attack, hold, and release, you can have a little bit longer values than you would have with expansion. It's not a, you're not going to cut off a signal necessarily, but the longer the attack, the more likely you are to allow a louder than expected signal through, and the longer the release, the more likely you are to quiet a signal that you didn't intend to quiet. So generally I will set those fairly short to stop high peak. And again, the idea here is that we don't want the compressor to kick off during normal speech, and we don't want it to take too long to kick on during a peak. So we want to make sure we're giving that nice even signal out to our to our audience. So after you've set expansion and compression, you'll want to add some makeup gain. Now, depending on what type of uh, signal level you're sending into the compressor, you may need more or less makeup gain, and also it'll depend on the compression ratio that you're using. The higher your compression ratio, the more makeup gain you're going to need afterwards. Generally, I find somewhere between 5 and 15 decibels of makeup gain is appropriate, you know, again, depending on multiple variables. You're, this is something you're going to have to play with and find what the right level for you is. Now, the last thing is that most of these uh, combination expanders and compressors will have a separate limiter that you can use to limit the output signal so that you don't accidentally peak. And this can be really important, especially if you you know, bang table, scream, or something like that during your performance. It'll make sure that you don't, you know, have to give headphone warnings before people hop on. It's going to vary as to your individual settings where you want to set your peak limiter at. One thing you want to make sure is you don't want to set this too low. Otherwise, you risk clipping your own voice as you're talking. What I would do, most of these are going to have a gauge on them that's going to tell you the output level. 
leave the peak limiter off, go through a normal performance, try and keep an eye on it and see about how high you get at your highest, and then set it a good four to eight decibels above that. And that way you can have those louder moments without actually peaking people out and busting people's eardrums with your loud shrieking. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, throw a like on it. Also, leave any comments you have for me below. If you think this video would be helpful for people that you know, share it out to them. Sharing really helps me. And if it's your first time at this channel, subscribe for more content like this in the future. There's links in the description section below to other places you can find me online, like Reddit, Steam, Twitter, and uh, NoQuarter.org, my gaming org. I'd love to game with you. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one.